Well, this week on Famous Aquarius, I had to switch things up a little bit. Now, I am going to do a famous Aquarius, but she's an infamous Aquarius, which means that she's famous for some shit that you don't want to be famous for. <laughs> okay. She's famous for stuff that's no good. Um, as a matter of fact, out of all the Aquarius that I've covered so far, she probably has done the most heinous of crimes. Okay. Now, this Aquarius I'm talking about, her name is Alyssa Bustamante. And this story is a very grisly one, okay? So if you're somebody who has a hard time hearing stories about violence, especially violence against children, because these are both children. Alyssa's grown now. She's 26 now. But at the time that this occurred, she was 16. And her victim was 9 years old. So if you do not want to hear something like that, which I totally understand if you choose to skip this <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next video. Okay. So I just wanted to put that out there up front. I'm getting ready to tell you about this grisly, grisly Aquarius. But first I am Queen Alcet Hero, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, pass it on to somebody else who might like it too, and don't forget to leave us a positive comment in the comment section. And stick around to the end of the video if you want to hear me read and respond to two of my favorite positive comments from previous videos, okay? Um... If you'd like to get a reading done, please email me. And if you want to hit me up on social media or be one of my patrons on Patreon, all that information is underneath this video too. Now, let's get into this situation. This is a doozy. So Alyssa is definitely an Aquarius. Alyssa was born on January the 28th of 1994. The reason why this particular Aquarius grabbed me was because when I saw her picture, which I used for the thumbnail, it really disturbed me. Something about her vibration really touched me. And I was like, is she an Aquarius? And I looked her up and she is. So I was like, I got to tell them about this infamous Aquarius. Basically, Alyssa is an American woman at this point, uh, who at the age of 15, uh, some sources say 16, so 15, 16 years old, was convicted of the murder of her nine-year-old neighbor. Her neighbor, may she rest in peace, her name is Elizabeth Olton, and this case happened in St. Martin's, Missouri which is a place where you don't expect something like this to happen. I mean, like you, like this is awful. You hope this wouldn't happen anywhere, but especially in a place like this, whose crime rate is so low. Alyssa was living uh, right, a stone's throw, they said, so right near um, this young lady and her family. Apparently, Alyssa lived with her four siblings and her grandparents and the young lady, Elizabeth, um, she lived with her family not too far down the road. Um, Alyssa had a really difficult life. Um, Alyssa was born to teen parents. Her father was in and out, mostly in jail for assault. He was a very violent person. So only God knows um, how much violence that she had to endure when he was out of jail. And then the rest of the time, he just was absent. Um, they said that he did keep in contact with her, but I'm not sure if that was good or bad. And her mother, unfortunately, was a really bad drug addict. And she was in and out of Alyssa's life. So because of that, the grandparents took custody of the four children. Now, the grandmother took custody when Alyssa was eight years old. So you can imagine how much neglect, how much abuse, how much violence she probably saw by the time she was eight and finally come out of that household. So when her grandmother got her and she started to try to give them a normal, a normal life, very stable. And people who told the story said that her grandmother did give her a stable, loving home. You know, she did the best that she could. 
But unfortunately, because of all that she had been through before coming to this point, she was already having severe mental health issues. So again, this is another common indicator of how much she probably went through up until this point. However, being an Aquarius, she was very intelligent. Okay, a lot of Aquariuses are really smart and some of us use those intelligence to get us in trouble <laughs> and some of us use them to get us out of trouble. Unfortunately, Alyssa was using hers to get her in trouble, but not at first. At first, she was just a very emo, sad looking kid. Uh, when I saw her pictures, it reminded me of myself because when I was growing up, uh, we were all into the goth thing. You know, everybody was into the goth thing. Emo came after us. I'm a 70, I was born in 1977. So my generation was one of the, I ain't gonna say we were the first generation of goth because there was some goth going on in the seventies and maybe even before, but we're one of the original OGs of the goth scene. The black lipstick, the black fingernail polish, the all black clothes. I mean, we did it and we did it hard. <laughs> okay. And this was the thing that she was into, but she was really smart. And it was really strange because all her friends said that she was kind and would never hurt anybody. She would say some strange things though, but she was always, they said, nice to people. Well, at 13 years old, she attempted to, com to commit suicide. So whatever demons she was struggling with, whatever was going on, uh, this was one of her first suicide attempts. She was put into a mental institution and they evaluated her. Um, they started her taking meds. They started her in therapy. She was being treated for depression. Um, they diagnosed her as a sociopath. That was her official diagnosis. Um, and her mental health advocates were discussing if she should be permanently institutionalized. They were at the point where they were thinking that she could be dangerous to herself and others. Well, before they had a chance to make that decision, she commits a crime. So before the crime happened, she had been cutting herself um, some of her friends knew, of course, her family knew, and they were, of course, having her treated, but she was still cutting herself. She was still, uh, making very morbid comments about death and dying and murder and those kind of things. Um, and, you know, she was writing about these things in her diary. She was drawing very disturbing pictures on the wall of people being hurt. Uh, one of which her own sister, she even wrote her name next to this picture of somebody that was clearly hurt um, with a blade. Um, she wrote lots of morbid poems. She was like writing on the inside of her a closet. So like when the investigators went to her home to search, they found all this like morbid writing and, and pictures. Nothing really like demonic, just very like death and emo kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, she was just, you know, really, really disturbed. And even they said on her online profile, um, she was on some different online sites and on her profile, her, she said her hobbies included killing people and cutting herself. Like those are your hobbies. Okay. Um, she would also not go to school, even though she was smart, she would go to school when she felt like it and she would rebel against authority figures. So again, we see this Aquarius energy, that rebellion, <laughs> that, rebellious, that rebellious energy coming forward, that intelligence, even though we're still rebellious, that intelligent energy is there. Um, and they said that the, the reason why she got caught was that she actually wrote about the murder in her diary, okay? So this shows you like how out of touch her how out of touch she is. You committed a crime and you wrote about it in your diary and left it laying around. <laughs> you know, this shows like you know you really didn't think these things through. And um, later on, the victim's family actually sued the hospital because it was said that she should have never been let out in the first place. Like these behaviors were all enough 
to have done something before this tragic crime. So let me tell you guys about the crime. On October 1st, uh, October 21st of 2009, apparently she had her little sister. She had a little sister and two little brothers. She had her little sister go across the way and get one of the kids from next door. Now, she didn't say like why she chose to do this. Um, as far as, you know, she didn't say that the girl did anything. They didn't have any problems. The little girl that she went to get was nine. Alyssa was six, 15, 16. Her little sister was six years old. So her little sister had no idea what was going on, but she told her to go get this nine-year-old. And it was said that she had already dug the graves. She had dug two. So police don't believe that she intended to just do this one crime. They believe she actually had another crime in mind and maybe something went wrong because she had also shown aggression towards her own siblings. So they weren't sure what the second grave was for, but it was two. Anyway, so on this day, October 21st, she sends her sister to get the young lady, Elizabeth, the nine year old girl. And uh, she asked, could she come out and play? So this is a very small community, not a very big community at all. I think it was like 2,000 people in the whole town. So everybody knew everybody. These kids played together all the time. The mother was cooking and she told her daughter, one hour, you can go play with this Emma. Emma was her sister's name. You can go play with Emma for one hour. Well, that hour never ended. She never came home. So the mother knew something was wrong because her daughter was afraid of the dark and it was getting late. So she knew whenever it was getting dark, her daughter would hightail it home, you know? So immediately when she didn't come home, she called the police. She sounded the alarm. First she called Emma's house and Emma's grandmother was like, nah, she never was here. And she sounded the alarm. She called the cops. People was looking for her. They said like three or 400 volunteers came out just to help because there was a lot of woods behind their home and they just combed the area. And um, apparently they weren't able to find anything. Uh, she did have her cell phone on her. The mother was able to get the cell phone company to, you know, do the trace to where the phone was. And they were like, the phone is right there. It's basically in the woods. So they kept on searching, trying to see if they can find her. So apparently Emma said that her sister told her to go get Elizabeth and then to go home. So when they questioned Emma, like Emma, like, where's your playmate? Emma lied and said, oh, we played for an hour, then she went home. But then Emma changed her story and said, oh, I fell in a bush and my sister had to come pull me out the bush. And they were like, your sister was there? So then they want to talk to the sister who is Alyssa. So they ask Alyssa a bunch of questions. Um, and basically over the course of her being interrogated, it came out her own mouth that she had dug this grave and they were like walking her through the neighborhood. Like, well, cause they were like, well, your sister said you saw her. What did you see her last? And they were like walking her through the neighborhood and they came across one of the graves, not the one that Elizabeth was in, but the empty one. And she's like, oh, I just dug it. You know, I just like digging graves. And they're like, okay. So they're very suspicious at this point because up until that point, they didn't even think that this was really a crime. The police thought that she wandered off, you know, and she would be fine. But come to find out, unfortunately she wasn't. So after interrogating, um, Alyssa, Alyssa admitted that she dug the grave. And then after further interrogation, she admitted that she did indeed uh, kill her after they found the diary. That's how she ended up giving them a confession. Apparently they sent, you know, people to search the home. The last place that she was at was Alyssa's house. So they sent a team to go search the house and they did not find Elizabeth, 
but they found all of the creepy writings on the wall, the pictures. They said she used her blood to, in some of the writings. Some of it was in Sharpie. Um, and they found her diary. And the last entry for October 21st was scribble scrabbled out. And all they could see was the last line. And the last line said, I'm going to tell you exactly what it said. The last line said, K, I got to go to church now. Laugh out loud. So when the investigators saw that, they were like, what? Why did she cross this out on the same day that this young lady went missing that she claimed she knows nothing about? So they took the diary. They took it back. And they did whatever cop things you, you know, whatever forensic things you do to something. And unfortunately, they found two words, slit throat. And when they told Alyssa what they found, she confessed. That she apparently had stabbed little Elizabeth for no reason. Just she said that she wanted to know what it felt like to take somebody's life. That was her reasoning for this. And little sweet Alyssa, she buried her in the other grave, the one that they didn't find. And she did take them to it. And they found her remains. And of course, she was arrested. Uh, she was tried as an adult. That's why she's still in jail now. Um, and they said that she had actually dug the grave five days before. So that's why they were like, this was definitely something that was premeditated because you dug the graves five days before you actually did this. So you had five days to say, you know what? This isn't right. You had five days to say, I should not do this. And it also, when she got Elizabeth, they walked for 15 minutes to get to the site where she attacked and murdered her. So you had 15 minutes to see that this is not the right thing to do. So she was tried as an adult and she is currently serving 35 years in jail. And then she'll be up for parole because she was a minor when this happened, even though she was tried as an adult in her county, that is the law that she will be up for parole. Now, whether or not she'll get out is a different story. Um, and the other part, I wanted to tell you guys was that after the murder, remember I told you about the journal entry? Well, they were able to uncover the entire thing. So I'm going to read to you what she wrote in her diary that got her arrested. I just fucking killed someone. I strangled them and slit their throat and stabbed them. Now they're dead. I don't know how to feel at the moment. It was amazing. As soon as you get over the, oh my God, I can't do this feeling, it's pretty enjoyable. I'm kind of nervous and shaky though right now. K, I I got to go to church now. Laugh out loud. And she literally did go to church. After this happened, after she murdered this poor child, stuffed her in a grave. And the child is nine and she is 15 15, 16 years old, you're a child yourself and buried her and then went to a church event with her grandmother and her siblings like nothing happened while the rest of the community is out trying to find this baby. So I told this story for two reasons. Number one, I told this story because I wanted to bring awareness to the situation because number one, I want people to know when you see a young person, 13, 14, 15, male or female, and they're clearly going through something, cutting themselves, emo, depressed all the time, clearly going through something. I want to behoove you to reach out because as a young girl, I never killed anybody, but I was very emo. I was very suicidal. The way that she was cutting herself, I had many suicide attempts. I still have scars on my arm from suicide attempts. Because at the same age, 
I was dealing with trauma that I didn't know how to process. So all I can say to my audience is regardless of the person's zodiac sign, if you see young people going through something and you're in a position to just give them some encouragement, just say something, you know, because I feel like at any given time, all the adults that were around me, you would have thought one of them would have said something with this girl, not right. She needs some help, you know, but not one of them did. In Alyssa's case, her grandparents did get her help. They did take her to, you know, try to help her and things like that. But apparently it was just too late. I feel like her psyche had cracked long before her grandmother took custody of her. So this is another one of those unfortunate cases because like I said on the thumbnail, the predator, the prey now becomes the predator. Once you become the predator, you're not getting no mercy. <laughs> you know, you're not getting no mercy. You're not getting no help. She's not going to get rehabilitated in jail. She's probably just going to sit there and rot. And the bottom line is, is that we might have had, because of her intelligence, and she probably had a great deal of creativity, we might have had somebody that could have been a benefit to society. But instead, we had somebody who took away from society, took away from a family, took away somebody's life as a child just to see what it was like. And when you think about it, it made me want to slap the shit out of her. It makes me want to slap her. But then it reminds me immediately, this is a child. This is a, an abused child who murders a child. This is a child who, like I said before, has now become the predator. Nine times out of 10, her psyche is completely split. And I don't even know if there's any coming back from this kind of a split. Maybe so. I don't know. I wouldn't trust her around me. <laughs> like, I'll be like, mm -mm. at that point, once you become the predator, it's too late. So the only thing I can say is, is that this particular infamous Aquarius is a very tragic tale. Um, the young lady, the, the Elizabeth, the young lady whose life she took, is so senseless. Because if somebody had been able to help this young girl, this Alyssa, if somebody had been able to help her way before... She snapped way before her psyche cracked. We would still have Elizabeth with us. And only God knows what kind of a contribution. She looked like a sweet little girl. Only God knows what kind of contribution she would have grew up. Somebody was saying that she would be in college right now. And I was like, wow, only God knows what she would have created or did. So we have two children who never were able to reach their full potential because the adults around them didn't handle their business. Rest in peace, Elizabeth. And I hope that um, her family, I mean, I can, I mean, her family, like, oh my God, I feel so bad for her mom. Her mom, you guys, I watched documentaries and news clips and read things online to get this case for you guys. And her mom just broke my heart every time I saw her. And I'm just like, this is just the most awful thing in the world. But the parts of her, when I'm, you notice I pointed out the Aquarius parts. Because those parts, anybody, anybody can be rebellious. Anybody can be intelligent. Anybody can be those things. But what I see here, like I said before, is those parts of her, the good parts of her, had they had been cultivated we would not have had this situation. So that is our infamous Aquarius for this week. Let me know if you've heard of this story because um, this is a pretty famous one online. Now let's read some positive comments because we need a palate cleanser after that. Vera Wang said, I distanced myself or completely cut people off for disloyalty. Vera is an Aquarius, I think. 
Um, but she says she cuts people off completely for disloyalty. And honestly, Aquarius or not, that's smart. If somebody's disloyal, keeping them in your camp is not a good idea. What you going to do, wait for them to do something else? <laughs> you know, if they're disloyal, they're always going to be disloyal nine times out of ten. And why chance it? Why chance? Maybe they've changed. I'm not chancing it. I agree with that 100%. Jermaine Doris Jean. Hey, Jermaine Doris Jean Howard. I missed the last part. Jermaine Doris Jean Howard. Hey, says, Queen, you are amazing. Thank you so much. You are too. Thank you. All right, guys, it's time to get going. So come back soon because you know I got a lot more to say. See you later.